Peter Garrett is one rock star who's prepared to put his money where his mouth is. If there's something that disturbs him, he and his band Midnight Oil go out and sing about it. For 10 years or more, the Oils have been campaigning and raising money for their pet projects. Now the issue that concerns them most is the growing tide of homeless children. A few weeks ago, the Oils gave a series of concerts for these kids. But Peter Garrett isn't one to simply sing for someone else's supper and then forget them. He's keeping up the pressure. Just remember that kids don't vote. Kids haven't got any political power. Kids aren't financially strong. Kids aren't good lobby groups. Kids have got nobody to go into bat for them, really. Peter Garrett has gone into bat for them. Along with the other members of Midnight Oil, he's been raising money, nagging governments, and singing up a storm. Raising our children, rearing our young. You still be simple, your bodies be calm. But despite a national inquiry into youth homelessness, despite millions of dollars being thrown at the problem, nothing has changed. At least, not for the better. The problem actually got worse. I mean, a 100% increase in the number of young kids that come onto the street who are loose with no abode, no home, no shelter in two and a half, three years? That's, that's an incredible increase in kids. They might be dossing down in a football field, they might be in a bin, they might be under a bus shelter, they might be in some bushes, they might be down at the park at the other end of town. But wherever they are, they're vulnerable, and wherever they are, it is not a home. I just want to celebrate. I'm not going to sell my soul to him. The Oils fans are famous for their dedication. They know the words to all the songs. Sell my soul. But the script at this Sydney concert takes the form of a challenge. Thank you. This is a show that says kids, people under the ages of 18 who do not have a roof over their heads through no fault of their own deserve to be given some assistance. And if those people at the top of the ladder are not going to do it, then you and I, the ones who are some other parts of the ladder, will have to. So please welcome from Parramatta Youth Project and the Christian Bikers, Mr. Greg Hurst. Thank you, Peter. How many of you have ever been homeless? Has anyone out there ever been homeless? It's the biggest crowd this youth worker has ever played to. Tonight, right across Australia, probably 50,000 Australian young people are scratching for a place to sleep and somewhere to get a meal. More than twice the number of people who are here tonight. Greg Hurst is what you'd call a street priest. A Christian without a church who patrols his beat on a 1984 soft-tailed Harley Davidson. Peter Garrett raises the money. Greg Hurst finds the kids who need it most. His home base is Parramatta in Sydney's western suburbs. But like everyone who works with street kids, he spends time at that classic kids hangout, King's Cross. A lot of them have a history of physical or sexual abuse, but there's an increase in number two who have some form of breakdown within the family where they feel unloved or unwanted uh, or abused emotionally. But now I realise I should have stayed because it's no fun living on the street. Take the case of David Ross. He's lived on these streets for nine years, since he was 11. Not just scared to death. No, oh, yeah. Oh, ha hang I was scared, but I hang around older people. They looked after me until I got to know the streets. But you never get to know the streets, so it's pretty bad. I wouldn't wish it upon my worst enemy, actually. Daniel Johnson just visits the cross these days, but he used to live here. He ran away from home at 13. He had no money, no plans, and precious little education. But he became streetwise 
very quickly. Come out by yourself and you don't know no one. You have to make friends quick, you know, or you won't survive. Why? Because of all the groups around. Like, you know, they see one bloke by himself, you know, walking along, you know, bang, that's it. We usually have up to six boys here. This is where Daniel lives now, a house in Parramatta owned by the Home Mission Society. Steam up, getting ready to go out into independent Hi. living. Hi. How are you? Peter Garrett's concerts will help pay for more places like this. Not a refuge, but a home, where kids can stay for as long as they need to get their lives back on the rails. Before you came here, what were you doing? Just been a bum like every other street kid. Yeah. yeah. And has your life has your life lifted considerably? I mean, fair income has it lifted itself? Since I've since I've got a job at Hans Heaps. Yes. Then you know that's that's made a really big difference. Yeah, I bet it has. You know, like I've got money at the end of the week. I'm, uh, you know, I can't get into any trouble. <laughs> but you've always been able to say something. He's Reverend John Livingston runs the program, which helps between two and three hundred street kids a year. And he's offering more than just a bed for the night. Most of the refuges that have been set up are temporary refuges. In other words, the kids have to move on after three months maximum and uh, the kids can stay with us as long as they're able, in fact, sometimes to independent living. But that's very costly. It might cost us up to $30,000 per year per young person. It was getting a bit violent at home, so I just thought I'd move before, you know, it got worse. Yeah. Some children are driven from home by violence or sexual abuse. Some are simply rebels who become runaways. John Livingston has seen it all. Probably the worst case I've come across is the fact that where some kids came home from school one day, knocked on the door and no parents. Look in the window, no furniture. The parents have gone while they've been at school, literally disappeared off into the country or somewhere else and left their kids on the doorstep. How old were the kids? The kids were under 12 years of age. Just enough to make you wanna cry. Just enough to make you wanna cry. They've sung for the environment. They've sung for Aboriginal rights. In fact, there's probably no good cause from Antarctica to nuclear disarmament. Midnight Oil hasn't raised money for. Do you ever get compassion fatigue? You personally, Peter Garrett. Cheeky question. <laughs> Sometimes it seems like Garrett is, you know, on about something constantly. But if you look at the things that, that I'm really talking about and that I think that we need to get in order, they're sort of quality of life issues for Australian community, which I think affect me and affect everybody else. Now Garrett's turning his power to his latest passion, homeless kids. If people know and the kids are there, they're visible on the streets, why does it continue? I don't think that people do know. I think that most of us uh, live in suburbs where everybody's asleep by 11 or 12 o'clock at night and if there's a bit of noise outside, then it's just people hooning around. Uh, you're not walking around at 2 o'clock in the morning, you know, lifting up bushes and uh, checking out bus shelters or uh, going down to sort of an old derelict house and finding out what's going on. I mean, you're in bed. Yeah, you can see that piece of uh, vinyl down there. Yeah. Bedding in there. Yeah, all right. Okay. By 1990, no Australian child will be living in poverty. That was the pledge. It's now autumn 1991. And this is the reality. Kids, three feet away from the stormwater drain, sleeping under bits of plastic they get off building sites in Parramatta Park in Sydney. What? country that has got a standard of living that we have, even in a recession, can afford not to put a small amount of money into getting kids back on the rails who, if they don't spend the money on them, are going to cost them a lot more in social breakdown and uh, unemployment benefits and jail terms and heavens knows what else over the remaining years of their lives. I mean, that's the whole key to this thing. So it's sort of self-protection. If you won't do it for compassionate reasons, do it for your own good. Well, any society that, that doesn't take care of its young and its vulnerable is determined to reap the consequences of it. 
If you scrap heap people, they will turn your society into a scrap heap. Have you tried pretty much everything? <clears throat> I wouldn't say everything. I've tried heroin, speed, I drink. Peter is 14. He was sent to his first institution, a welfare home, at the age of two. He became a runaway by yeah, 10. Boy. How's it going, man? <laughs> what have you been up to? One social oh, worker God. who's known him since he came to the streets described him as a feral child. My stepfather I don't get along with. My mother, oh, I get all right with her, but she doesn't like me very much at all. What about your real father? Um, my real father I've never met. Do you ever think you'd like to do something else? Yeah, I would like to do something else. What? Um, go back and live with my mother and go to school, but I can't go to school as I've been banned from every school in the ACT and kicked out of the education program. Why? Um, because I used to break windows, kick doors in, hit the teachers and just lash out at everything. Kids that are, that are difficult for the institutions to handle, which someone might call feral, are the minority. And they're the kids that need more help than anybody else because they've been so brutalised, whether it's from home... I or... read an interview with a street kid who said that their motto was don't talk, don't trust and don't feel. How do you get through that sort of attitude? Take them off the streets. I mean, the streets are for cars and for people walking on them for trucks. They're not for little heads of adolescents. I bet you a million dollars, man. If any, most of us street kids around Canberra could live at home and have a nice home, like a lot of other kids, we'd stay there. But like in some homes, there's drugs, there's alcoholic parents that just lash out on you, hit you, whatever, or just take off on you and leave you in the middle of nowhere and you don't know what to do. in the middle of nowhere, with nowhere near enough help. For some 50,000 children, that's the story of their lives. We've got a 100% increase in numbers. That's the minimum figure. It's probably more. And it, uh, the tap shows no signs of being turned off, particularly when we're in a recession. It's turned from a problem into an epidemic. Dad's so bad, he lives in the pub. The thing about this which is exciting is that I know and we've discovered that you can actually get Australian kids back into Australian society out of that street milieu which is so devastating and so destructive for them by the simple provision of a little bit of care and uh, a bit of corrugated iron above their heads. Hello, I'm Tara Brown. Thanks for watching. To keep up with the latest from 60 Minutes Australia, make sure you subscribe to our channel. You can also download the Nine Now app for full episodes and other exclusive 60 Minutes content.